All right, so uh, first, thank you for coming on today. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, this is Dr. Lopez. He's the one who invented the Smart Prime ingredient. Uh, he's also invented uh, quite a few other trademarked ingredients in the industry. So we have him on today to uh, kind of go over what Smart Prime does. And uh, just to clarify for you guys why I included it in our official product. So um, yeah, I guess if we can just kind of go down that list of basically the three things that Smart Prime, um, you know, emphasizes and does to improve, um, you know, the, the output of omega-3s and all of that, uh, that'd be a good place to start. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, so thanks, uh, thanks for, for the opportunity to kind of, you know, dig in and dive in a little deeper on, on Smart Prime. Um, and, and then just to uh, clarify, you know, I, I don't want to take all the credit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a co-inventor on this ingredient. Um, you know, there's, there's a team of some really, you know, smart scientists and other great people as well involved. Uh, I, I'd like to probably shout out Ryan Yates, um, who's a PharmD PhD. He's um, currently at, um, he's at Ole Miss at the um, uh, National uh, Center for Natural Products Research. Uh, the Natural Products Research Center there, it's, it's got a pretty long storied history on like pharmacognosy and um, they have like a, a database of over 16,000 unique extracts of different botanicals wow. that they've like characterized and there are all these unique constituents. Uh, they do a lot of, they work with the pharmacy, with the School of Pharmacy hand in hand with doing a lot of medicinal chemistry and um, like it ends up doing, they end up getting a lot of uh, drug development, like lead molecules that they end oh, up wow. right modifying and developing into drugs. So, um, so yeah, so we, we were able to use um, a pretty cool um, AI engine or technology where uh, it's a uh, semantic language, artificial intelligence language um, uh, based algorithm and uh, machine learning. It lets us basically draw from all of the available um, data in the public domain. Um, you know, things you would normally consider like uh, Science Direct or PubMed or a lot of these scientific databases that are structured data, as well as some unstructured data, which is where it gets interesting because we're able to put things into the into the database that the engine is able to draw from. Um, that it's some unique data that we have developed from our lab, either in, in the clinical research center that I work with, uh, that I've co-founded with Tim Ziegenfuss at CHS, or some of the work that Dr. Yates has done as well uh, there. So, um, so basically with Smart Prime, we felt like there was, um, there was a major gap, I guess, because on paper, um, you know, omega-3 fatty acids should really be able to almost, you know, quote unquote, cure, and I use that word, you know, very loosely, obviously, cure almost everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in practice, uh, in human clinical trials, it just wasn't panning out quite as, as, as well as we'd expect. Um, a lot of like the systematic reviews and the meta-analyses, you know, there's Occasionally, you'll hear the headline, some like negative headline, like "Oh, fish oil doesn't really do anything for heart disease or yeah, preventing, yeah. you know, primary heart attack, etc." Right? Or stroke, or 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 uh, neurodegenerative disease, dementia, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we really wanted to dig in and find out like what was happening, what was the gap, what was the disconnect, what was the barrier, the roadblock. Mm -hmm. And we found that really the main roadblock probably had to do with a nutrigenetic. Um, issue. So the interaction between your genes and the nutrients that you consume um, and, and the fact that there's some people that basically just don't have an ideal or optimal um, uh, sort of uh, operation of, of their network or pathways of how they metabolize precursor omega-3s like um, alpha-linolenic acid or ALA from flaxseed or or perilla oil or uh, SDA from ahi flour, uh, or um, how they uh, obviously uh, um, process an overabundance of linoleic acid or LA from, you know, highly processed seed oils like soybean, uh, sunflower, uh, corn oil, et cetera, which is, you know, heavy in our food supply. Right. Yeah. Um, but I would say the, the, there's really three main levers that I think we're pulling 
by being able to target some of these nutrigenetic limitations or roadblocks with Smart Prime. One I would talk about is the pool, right? So it's the three P's, I would say. There's pool, um, there's the packaging, and then the third P is the processing. Um, so I would say first to talk about the pool. So what is the pool of, of um, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids or omega-3s and omega-6 that I'm talking about? Um, so by pool is I mean the total amount of omega-3s and omega-6s that are available in your body, in your tissues, right? They're usually going to be stored in your membranes. Uh, they can also be stored as part of lipid droplets inside triglycerides, in inside fat uh, tissue. Um, and every membrane of every cell in the body is going to have some sort of polyunsaturated fatty acid. And as a, as a PUFA or a polyunsaturated fatty acid, you have the two main families. You have omega-3 and omega-6. And uh, those are essential for us, for, for humans and most mammals, um, because we can't make um, the omega-3s and omega-6s from saturated fats, for example. Like you can't just take a bunch of coconut oil, palm oil, or you know um, saturated fatty acids and you can't make those omega-3s and omega-6 so you need to consume them so in terms of what smart prime does to the pool is it influences the the enzymes that are responsible for taking the precursors which are on the omega-3 side it's ala and on the omega-6 side it's la so ala is alpha linolenic acid omega-3 and it's 18 carbons long. Um, that's considered a short chain omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid or a, a short chain omega-3 PUFA, right, for short. On the omega-6 side, you have, um, a, uh, li you have linoleic acid, which is typically 16 carbons and it is an omega-6, and the omega basically just means how far away from the methyl ends of the molecule you find your first double bond. Um, that's what makes it, quote-unquote, unsaturated, right? And it's polyunsaturated because it's got more than one double bond in the chain of the, of the fatty acid. And so on the omega-6 side, you have LA that you're starting with. On the omega-3 side, you have a ALA that you're starting with. And you're, you're ultimately, the body needs to take those short-chain fatty acids. And if you're not consuming EPA or DPA or DHA in your diet, um, which most people in the civilized, industrialized Western world are not, um, there's actually an overabundance of omega-6. But if you're not taking in enough, then your body has to be able to take whatever precursors are there to make EPA, DPA, and DHA right all the way upstream and, um, and and so usually this takes many enzymatic steps um, these enzymes called like delta 5 desaturase delta 6 desaturase and then elongase and what they do is they're adding carbons to that chain so you can go from you know that 18 chain ala all the way to a 20 chain 20 carbon chain epa but you're also going from four unsaturated, you know, double bonds to having five. And then if you go to DHA, you're going to have 22 carbons is the length of that chain. And you're going to have uh, six du uh, double bonds in the, in the fatty acid chain in the, in the molecule. So, so the body has to do all these intricate enzymatic steps to be able to um, remove um, you know, to basically remove some um, uh, some electrons and cause the double bond to be uh, included or incorporated into the into the chain, um, and then it has to elongate by adding, bringing in carbons as well. It's usually two carbons at a time, and then cl clipping it and cleaving it so you get your your end products. So you're starting with ALA on the omega three side, and you're ending up with EPA and DHA. And then there's one in the middle also that's called DPA, um, which is the cosapentanoic acid. Um, and, and that one's 22 carbons long as well, but that one only has five. Um, that's why it's penta, pentaenoic acid. That's five double bonds instead of six, like DHA, which is hexaenoic acid. 
Okay. Um, so that's on the omega-3 side. Um, and what Smart Prime does is it those enzymes have two seats in them, basically. It's a good way to look at them. They're like pockets. And those two seats are open to be able to take in um, either an omega-3 or an omega-6 fatty acid. And what Smart Prime does is it makes it so that the enzyme is much more amenable and it has a higher affinity and it's drawn more to be able to process and take in the omega-3 to then process the omega-3 to where you want to get it to, which is EPA and DHA and DPA. And it, what it does is it makes it less comfortable and less open for the omega-6 to be able to have a seat in the enzyme. So you don't have, you're almost like um, creating like a little bit of a biohack to basically make the enzymes more preferential to omega-3 metabolism, which is what you want, and less to omega-6 metabolism, which is, you still need it. I mean, it's still essential, but we have such an overabundance because of our diets, et cetera, um, that you don't need as much of it. So what Smart Prime does is it helps to kind of fix that or correct that imbalance, and it helps to improve your pool of available omega-3 fatty acids. So it increases the pool of EPA, DPA, and DHA that now your cells can take and incorporate into the tissue, um, into the cells. Does that make sense on the on the pool? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, like, like we said before, I think you're basically shifting that ratio of like omega-6s to omega-3s because ideally you're supposed to have them equal, right? Um, but yeah, between no. one to one to four to one. Yeah. So okay. closer to, yeah, closer to one to one, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so like in, I mean, in Western culture, like, you know, the majority of fats we get is omega six. So this is going to kind of help shift that balance to getting more omega threes without even, without even changing your diet first off, which Correct. is, you know, I think that's a, a major beneficial thing that this, you know, the benefits of this we'll be able to see, um, just from that. And like, we haven't even gotten started in how it helps with like actually taking fish oil and that stuff too. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So Will, yeah, you're right. I mean, like the, the you know, the ratios um, right now in, in the U S are anywhere between 17, I've seen 17 to one up to like 25 to 30 to one, depending on what you're eating and where you're at, I guess. Wow. Uh, in terms of omega-6 to omega-3. So we've got a long way to go, right? To be able yeah. to get to the ideal ratio. Like yeah, at that point, anything would, would help. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and one more thing I'll say before we leave the pool part and go to packaging is it also makes you relatively like um, somewhat resistant or it almost protects you, um, almost like bulletproofs you a little bit from a scenario where you do have uh, a, a short, you know, uh, term increase in omega-6 in your diet. So if you were to have like cheat meals, for example, where the omega-6 ratio does go up a little bit, if you're taking Smart Prime on a regular basis, it almost acts as a little bit of a shield, if you will, from some of the overabundance of omega-6 that you might consume in your diet anyway. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, so if you take more Smart Prime, you can resist some of the insult, right? From yeah. you know consuming you know foods that might be a lot higher in those in those processed seed oils, right? And corn uh -huh. oil, et cetera. Yeah. So just something else to keep in mind for um, on the pool side of things with Smart Prime. Right. Right. Very cool. Yeah.